take it away. Okay, pointer, laser point. So, hello, I'm Iggy, and I would like to talk about differential abundance analysis of proteins and phosphorylation events from tandem mass spectrometry data sets using the proteome refer pipeline. So this is an outline of my talk. I'm gonna talk about some uh, basic introduction, um, challenges and problems in quantitative proteomics and phosphoproteomics data analysis. And how do you download, install, and get started? Uh, the proteome refer pipeline of real statistical tools used in the implementation, uh, my reanalysis of a publicly available data set and how I compared it with the published results, some discussion. And I would like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to give this talk. So uh, this is a quick overview of protein mass spectrometry. You basically have proteins. You cut it into pieces with an enzyme called trypsin. And it is these peptides that gets analyzed in the mass spectrometer. So you first get the overall peptide and measure its mass to charge ratio. The height of the peak will give you, um, you know, intensity, which correlates with the abundance of your peptides. And you can cut it further um, to get your, your MSMS spectrum. And each of these peak correspond to a fragment of the peptide. And from these peaks, you can read out your amino acid sequence. And you can, from these sequences matching back to your protein sequence database, you can identify the protein. For phosphopeptide analysis, you first have to enrich for phosphorylated peptide. And in the pept phosphorylated peptide, it has a uh, mass increase of about 80 Daltons for every phosphorylation present. And this phosphorylation could occur in serine, furanine or tyrosine residues. And based on the mass increase from the peaks of here, you can tell where the phosphorylation site is. Uh, some of the problems involved in phosphoproteomics and proteomics analysis is that there's presence of unwanted variation. For example, I put my data uh, of proteins versus um, intensities uh, per sample into analysis with PCA plot, uh, in this case using RFQ analysts, um, you can see that um, there is batch effects. Basically, each of these triangles, circles, square, and pluses are one different batch. So if you don't remove batch effects, then um, the samples, which are uh, the different treatment groups, which are in different colors, they will all be jumbled up and you have not got any signals. So, and also a popular existing tool like the React Home online web portal, even though it uses a Lima pipeline, it does not do any unwanted variation removal or batch effects removal, which means that it is a great tool to explore the data, but you're not going to have power to detect um, changes in protein abundance. So we need to incorporate existing tools that remove batch effects. For example, FOSR is a published tool that uses unwanted uh, removal of unwanted variation from proteomics uh, data, but it mainly focuses on time series analysis and it doesn't do um, natively do, you know, pairwise comparisons of groups. And you also got this RUV free package that deals with missing data as well. Um, so we need to think of incorporating these tools and there's also missing values in the data and it affects the coverage of the proteome and the phosphoproteome. But one of the major reasons why I need to develop this too is that um, th there's no good tools to be able to reproduce my data. If I you know, get some data from uh, publications, the tools may not be easily available, so I can't easily reproduce the results. So I wanted to create a tool that can be shared and uh, people can reproduce the results easily. So how do you install Proteome Refer? You can download it using this QR code or this link over here. You clone uh, the repository and you can install it. 
the reason why you need to do clone is, is because it's not published on our conductor yet, but I'm looking forward to do that sometime soon. Uh, you have to configure the uh, configure file. Um, and once you make install, you get a bunch of scripts that you can uh, use to uh, perform your analysis. So Pretty Ritual itself has a, it's a our library uh, that has a lot of functions and the command line scripts use those functions. And I also have got a Winget or tutorial repository. Uh, you can also clone the repository. And for example, once you install uh, Proteum Refer, you can run this command line script with a configuration file that includes all the parameters required to do the analysis. And then you point to the output files, and then you can rerun all the analysis that I've done. So this is a uh, basic outline of my pipeline. So you first do some data cleansing. Do the statistical analysis using the Lima package, and there are also other statistical tools implemented, implemented too. Create some QC plots. For phosphocytes, you need to normalize by the host proteins uh, abundance. I'll talk about it in the next slide. And you perform pathway enrichment and kinase substrate enrichment uh, using the Kingswinger two, also in our conductor. So correct interpretation of phosphopeptide abundance change needs um, normalization by the host protein abundance change. For example, each blue circle here represents a protein and each of the red dot or red P represent a phosphorylated protein. Uh, over here, this one, this one, example here, this one, uh, all represents a twofold change. But here, uh, even though that you have one phosphorylated protein and afterwards you got two phosphorylated protein after some changes. Uh, the protein abundance is very different. So in reality, it is not really a twofold change that you're measuring. It's a much greater fold change in proportion. So I have used the publicly, publicly available data set of phosphoproteome and proteome of rep synapse under homeostatic up and down scaling. Uh, we have two different conditions. We have TTX treatment and big BRC treatment and have two, three time points, five minutes, 15 minutes and 24 hours. So for each treatment versus control, uh, there are six comparisons in total. So the purpose of the Data cleansing is to remove poor quality data. So for example, there is some uh, common protein contaminants in there that we need to remove or peptides or proteins that matches to the reverse decoy database, we need to remove that. And we note that um, when we got matches, we are not really matching to one protein, but a group of proteins that share the same set of peptides because you do have a lot of proteins in the protein database that are from the same family or share sequence sim similarities. Uh, because it matches to a group of proteins, you have to, uh, the tool that I use will order uh, the uniprot accessions based on how much annotations there are. I try to put the one with the most annotation uh, to the front and sort them accordingly. I usually use the MaxQuant um, engine to do um, analysis of the raw mass spectra, and it gives me this protein groups file, which I use for the proteomics data. In there, there is the protein groups and the intensity of each protein in different samples in this matrix over here. In the phosphoproteomics data, I use the evidence.txt matrix. Uh, the reason is that uh, it, is, it has more detail than the phospho sty sites um, file, which most people use. And it is easier to keep track of multiple phosphorylation sites in one peptide. And it is the phosphoprotein data matrix over so here, where you got a peptide and the phosphorylation site and the intensity per sample. And I also need the fastest sequence um, in which the searches were done on. Um, for the protein data matrix, the uniprot accessions forms the sample um, protein ID. 
but for the phosphopeptides and phosphoproteins, I mean phosphopeptides, um, you can concatenate these columns into one column, and therefore you basically get the same data shape, which can be used in the same uh, scripts. So I have to do some missing values imputation. I do log true transformation between sample normalizations. Uh, missing value imputation help remove unwanted variations. Uh, I have to perform missing value imputation using the FOSS-R library. First, I remove proteins with too many missing values. Uh, use this SC impute function to uh, compute, to impute protein abundance uh, for a specific group of uh, samples. And then the rest I fill with a random draw from uh, normal distribution. I have to do some, some post-hoc cleaning because step three could introduce uh, low confidence imputed values. So I remove them after pairwise groups hypothesis testing. So I have to remove unbonded variation in which I have negative control proteins, which are stably expressed proteins not affected by experimental conditions. I usually pick 100 to 500 empirical negative control proteins using an ANOVA test of the groups, picking the ones with the highest p-values, and then using multiple dimensionality reduction, it removes the unwanted factor. And the advantage of doing this is that we do not need a predefined list of negative control proteins, so it can be used in non-model organisms as well. So here you got the proteomics data. This is the relative log expression plot uh, showing the biases in the data. You can see that before RUE3, um, the interqualar range is larger, but after applying RUE, um, the interqualar range is smaller, so there's less bias in the data. Uh, before RUV, the different um, treatments uh, shown by different groups, they are all jumbled up together. But after applying RUV3, um, samples from the same treatment group, which is the same color, are now clustered together. So I can then do a hypothesis testing with Lima. You can put in the formula string. You can add in other covariates like H, sex, and genotypes. You give it the experimental design matrix and the different contrasts uh, between the groups. And then you can also do Lima boom like mean variance trend normalization. When I compare my log ball change with the published data, uh, the published data is on the y axis. Uh, on the x-axis and my log flow changes on the x-axis, you can see that the log flow changes are highly correlated. If you look at uh, the number of significant proteins on this graph over here, uh, the purple bars means um, the significant proteins that are overlapping between the original publications and my pipeline, and the different colors is um, the, one, the red ones are the ones that are only found by my protein with pipeline. You can see that we got comparable number of um, significant proteins. If you look at the number of enriched gold terms, we got a uh, comparable number of enriched gold terms. For the phosphoproteomics data, um, again, you get, uh, this is before RUV and after RUV, the interquartal range for the RLE plot is smaller, so there's less bias in the data. Before RUV, the PCA plot, all the different treatment groups of different colors are jumbled up together. But after RUV, um, same treatment groups of the same type, which has the same color, are grouped together. And the log flow change for phosphopeptides are correlated between my analysis and the original publications. And I also got a comparable number of uh, significantly changing phosphocytes. And when I look at the number of enriched go terms, we have the same similar number of enriched go terms. And when we look at the kinase substrate enrichment, we have very similar um, kinase, kinase enrichment scores and the number of enriched uh, kinase are very similar between uh, my analysis and the original publications as well. So uh, to wrap up, proteome refers supports reproducible differential abundance analysis of proteomics and phosphoproteomics data. Uh, if you share the parameter file and the bash scripts, then people can replicate the analysis easily. Uh, I need to submit the package to the file conductor 
perform data visualization, uh, maybe in the future do workflow in integration. Uh, I need to think about how to um, different ways of performing missing value imputation. Uh, Mango Lee from Tuesday gave a very nice talk on missing value imputation, and there are other R packages for imputation as well. And RUV do require some experience in tinker tinkering to get it fine tuned. So I would like to acknowledge uh, people and groups funding from the Luminance Alliance and also Pablo for extensive help on software engineering. Thank you. Thank you, Iggy. Do we have a quick question? Ramya, I might get you to just start setting up whilst we have any quick questions. Yep. Thank you so much for the talk, Ignatius. And I have a very basic question about phosphoproteomics. Yes. So um, you were looking at the enrichment terms, I think the geoterms for the phosphocytes. Yes. So how do you get do you get like the closest proteins? Does MaxQuant give you like the closest proteins or genes from to the phosphocytes, or how do you do that? Yes, I I first um, find the proteins that has the most annotation for that phosphopeptide, and I do that for all the phosphoproteins. But uh, because you get um, phosphoproteins that were up you know, phosphopeptides are upregulated and phosphopeptides are downregulated. There are different ways to get an upregulated group and a downregulated group. Um, you can use Venn diagram, you can look at this total log for change, uh, but they usually give you roughly the same results. And then I basically use group of upregulated proteins, upregulated phosphoproteins and upregulated uh, downregulated phosphoproteins to do the enrichment analysis. Thank you. you can email me, I can tell you. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much, Iggy. Please join me in thanking Iggy for, for his talk.